In this video, we're going to look at impulse and momentum. Let's start off with impulse. When a force is applied to an object, the effect depends on both the mass of the object and the length of time for which the force is applied. If we take a constant force, let's say F newtons, and apply that to an object, then we're going to get an acceleration. With the acceleration, we get a change in the velocity. We can define the impulse, and we'll write it as I, as the product of force and time. We know that force is a vector quantity, therefore impulse will also be a vector quantity. So we can write I is equal to Ft, and the units now are Newton seconds. So the impulse now is a measure of force multiplied by time. This is one way we can write impulse. What we're going to do is look at another way, and this is going to help us solve some problems later on when we look at momentum. Let's take Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to take one of the SUVAT equations, and that is V is equal to U plus AT. I'm just going to rearrange, V minus U is equal to AT. Dividing through now by the T, we've got V minus U over T is equal to A. I'm going to sub this back into F is equal to MA. So F is equal to M, and instead of A, we can sub in now V, which is the final velocity, minus U, which is the initial velocity, over time, which is T. Multiplying both sides by T, we've got FT is equal to M, and then V minus U. So the second way we can write the impulse, and again, you'll see it written as I or J, will be equal to M, the mass, multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we've got now our vector quantity. We know velocity is a vector quantity. Impulse is a vector, uh, vector quantity also. So we've got impulse is equal to mv minus u. You might see this written. I is equal to mv minus mu newton seconds. We'll see shortly how this links with momentum. So there is impulse defined as force multiplied by time or the mass multiplied by final velocity minus the initial velocity. Let's now look at the concept of momentum. The word momentum is used in everyday life without any real understanding. If we take now a particle or an object of mass m and velocity v, we can say that its momentum is the product of the two. So we'll define momentum to be capital M and that's equal to little m or lowercase m multiplied by v. We know that impulse is a vector quantity, as we got force. Also, we know momentum now is going to be a vector quantity, as we've got velocity. So the units, again, are newton seconds, and we can say momentum is mass times by velocity. So let's look at an example of momentum in the real world. Let's take a rugby field. Let's have an 11-year-old small boy jogging along. So his mass is pretty low. His velocity is fairly low. If we take now an 18-year-old larger player running towards him, now if he's sprinting, his mass is going to be greater and his velocity will be greater. So we can say that the 18-year-old boy has a greater momentum than the 11-year-old. So that's an everyday situation where you might see momentum. It's the product of mass and velocity. So let's see how these two link. If we look here, momentum is mass times velocity. We've got the impulse is mass times velocity minus mass times the initial velocity, so final velocity and initial velocity. If we link these, we can state now that the impulse, I'm writing it here, the impulse is the change, so jotting this down, the impulse is, uh, is now change for change in momentum. So impulse is the change in momentum. In this video, we're going to work through some basic examples, and we'll either use I is equal to FT, I is equal to mv minus u, or m is equal to mv. In later videos, we will go on to look at the conservation of linear momentum, but for now, I just want to get used to some easy, straightforward calculations with these particular quantities. So let's recap. Impulse is force times time, or mass multiplied by final velocity minus initial velocity. The vector quantities, they're measured in newton seconds. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Again, it's a vector quantity and measured in newton seconds. So let's look at some questions. A force of six newtons is applied to a particle in the direction of motion for three seconds. 
we're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the particle. So we've got two choices. We're looking for the impulse. So we can write I is equal to FT, force times time, or we can say that the impulse is equal to MV minus U. As with many of these questions in mechanics, you'll be given two pieces of information and solve for the third, or three pieces and solve now for the fourth. We can see clearly we're going to use the first one. So we can say now that this will be the product of the force and time. The force is six newtons. The time is three seconds. Do check that you have the correct units. So we're working with newtons and we're working with seconds. And that should be clear in terms of the units that we're using. So multiplying the two, we can say that the impulse exerted on the particle is going to be 18 newton seconds. So nice and straightforward. If you want to picture what's happening here, we've got now this scenario right here. We've got the impulse and now some force is being applied. And I've taken impulse to be in the positive direction from left to right. I like these little diagrams as we can go ahead and just put all of the information on here. So for example, now if we had the, uh, the mass, we could put the mass on. If we had initial velocity, final velocity, and then we could go ahead and solve some problems. So nice and straightforward, it's just the product of force and time. Okay, the next one, a ball of mass five kilograms receives an impulse. The velocity of a ball increases from three meters per second to four meters per second. Find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the ball. With this, I like to, I mean, this is a fairly straightforward example. I like a before and after shot. So what we've got then is a before and an after shot. In these particular cases, unnecessary, but it will get you into good habits of drawing what's going on. So our impulse, we're now applying here. So we're going to have some force and the force is going to be now from left to right. We've got the initial velocity. So this is going to be three meters per second. So that's going to be a positive quantity relative now to the force acting. We're going to have now another positive quantity, four meters per second. We've got our before shot and we've got our after shot. So this is what we've got. Now we know that the mass is going to be five and I like to put the five just there and five just there. So all we need to do is use I is equal to M and then we'll have V minus U. We're looking to solve for I. So we can say I will be equal to five. Then we have the final velocity, which is the four, and that's positive, minus the initial velocity, which is three, which is also positive. So we can say that I will be five lots of one. So we can say five Newton seconds. So nice and straightforward, we've just plugged in. Clearly that diagram wasn't necessary, but for more complicated ones, it might benefit you. Bob pushes a block of mass five kilograms along a table from rest with a constant force of three newtons for four seconds. In part A, we're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the block. And in part B, we're asked to find the speed of the block after three seconds. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. We've got this before shot, we've got an after shot, and it will do something like so. So we've got now this force being applied, and that's in the direction of motion. And we can write on here now that we've got five We've got five just here. We've got five just here. So we've got this force being applied. And if you want to put your force on, you can put your force on. Uh, and we can place now these arrows on. So if you want to do this, you can do it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So what we're going to have is the following situation. So we've got some force. And the force is going to be applied now. And this now is a force of five newtons. And that's going to be in this direction, like so. So let's go ahead and find the magnitude. So we can say that I will be equal to. So what have we got here? We've got three newtons and four seconds. So I'm going to use I is equal to FT. So we can say I is going to be equal to the force, which is three, multiplied by four. Correct units for both. So we can say that I will be equal to 12 newton seconds. So that's what we have just here. Now we need to find the speed of the block after the three seconds. So we've got this impulse and this impulse is 12 newton seconds. Now consider what I've got here. I've got now the block at rest. So the initial velocity is zero meters per second. This is a before shot. And then we've got an after shot just here. So what we're looking for then is this value. And this value is gonna be V meters per second. So let's go ahead and use I is equal to M and then we'll have V minus U. 
So we know that the impulse is going to be 12. We know that we've got a 5 kilogram mass. We want to find V, and we've got U to be 0. So we can see that 5V is equal to 12. So 12 divided by 5 will be equal to V. So we can say 2.4, and that's going to be V. So we've got now 2.4, and I'll put it just here, 2.4 meters per second. So that is now the speed of the particle after the three seconds. So we're simply going ahead and subbing this in. A snooker ball of mass 500 grams is traveling towards the cushion at a speed of 10 meters per second. The motion of the ball is perpendicular to the cushion. The ball rebounds with a speed of 8 meters per second. We're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the ball by the cushion. Now in the last situation, I really don't think it was 100% required to draw a picture. I think with these ones, it's better to do that. So let's have a look at our situation. Here's a before shot. So we're traveling now towards the cushion. So our velocity is in this direction here. Then afterwards, we're coming back the other way. So what we're looking then at is a force now being applied on the ball by the cushion. So this time our impulse is going to be moving from right to left. So let's go ahead and put some information on. What we've got here now is 500 grams. We need to be careful here as we need to be working in kilograms. So we can write down that the mass is one half. So we've got now this speed right here and this is going to be 10 meters per second. Now consider that this is in the opposite direction to the force. So that velocity will be minus 10. Afterwards, we're coming back this direction, and that's going to be 8 metres per second. So, our impulse now is moving from right to left. This is where the force is being exerted. Now, it's important to stress when we're doing these calculations that the impulse exerted by the cushion on the ball has the same magnitude as the impulse exerted on the cushion by the ball. These are equal and opposite. So the impulse going this way has the same magnitude as the impulse going that way. So let's go ahead and set this up. I is equal to M, and then we're going to have V minus U. The reason I like to picture this up is that I can see now the direction of the travel, of the motion, and then now give these positive or negative signs. So I is going to be equal to 1 half. Now the uh, uh, final velocity is going to be 8. That's V just here. That's what it was afterwards minus now we need to subtract the 10 here so we've got negative 10 because we're in the opposite direction so we can say that i is going to be one half and that's going to be 18 so let's go ahead and write that i will be equal to nine newton seconds and lots of these problems you can use essentially instead we've looked at the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the ball by the cushion you can work these problems now by flipping it over and looking at the magnitude of now the impulse exerted on the cushion by the ball, it will just have a negative sign. I prefer the sketch, but if you want to do it purely in terms of the formula, you can do. Just be very careful. I think this gives us a good picture of what's going on. So that's a brief introduction to impulse and momentum. So when we're looking at impulse, we're looking at the product of force and time. The smaller the amount of time, the more accurate our calculations are going to be. We can also see that impulse as the change in the momentum. So it's mv minus mu. Newton seconds are the units we use, and it's a vector quantity. The momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Again, it is a vector quantity, and the units we use are the Newton seconds. In the later videos, we're going to look at what we call conservation of linear momentum. But for now, hopefully that's been a good brief introduction to the topic for you.